Good morning, good morning, good morning. We're glad that you're joining us today as we get into discipleship empowerment study. As we've said probably a hundred times, getting into the Word and letting the Word get into us. Amen. We're glad that you join us around the world each day and trust that the Lord will use some of the things that we talk about to encourage us to be empowered in a greater way as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're praying for you and we pray that you pray for us. And uh, one of the things that we see that the elder John, the apostle John, was praying for the fellow believers, the fellow children, for the church. He constantly had that in his mind and in his heart, that the church would grow and it would prosper and that people would become mature and nurtured in our Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we go into 3rd John, we're working our way through 3rd John, and we're going to start at verses 5 and look from 5 to 8, the Lord willing, and see what the scriptures have to say to us. Because the, what the context is, is that John wants the church to prosper. He wants the disciples to prosper and to grow and mature so that they could bear fruit, much fruit, fruit that will last, amen? And uh, I think that's something that, that uh, we need to remember. And also, it was important that people get out and give testimony and not only give a testimony of what God is doing in their life, but to be a testimony, to walk in truth as a testimony, as Gaius was. He was a testimony. And because of his testimony and walking in truth, you know, he brought much joy to the Apostle John and also to those around him. Now, John is setting up something here that he's going to want to teach us as we get into verses 9 through the end of the chapter. But right now, he's going to set it up and begin to bring us to a place that the importance of the testimony and then the importance of this whole area of walking in truth. And today, as we continue on, our title is the, is the Love of Fellowship. Uh, there was an issue in the church in some ways that they would pick who they would have fellowship with and who they would. They would pick whether they want somebody who was locally or someone from another culture or background or tradition. And there was some division beginning to go, come on in the church by various leaders, kind of picking and choosing whom they would have fellowship with. Well, this kind of, the Spirit of God was moving upon John to speak out against this. And, and he begins to talk to us in verses 5 through 8, the importance of fellowshipping around the truth of the Word of God. So we see in verse 5, beloved, he is saying those loved ones, the ones, you know, be loved in the Lord. We love you in the Lord. Beloved, you do faithfully what you do for the brethren and for strangers. So he, he starts off by saying what you're doing, what you're walking in, how you're walking in that truth. Do it and continue to do it faithfully in whatever you do. And I love that, whatever you do. Matter of fact, I'm going to underline that. Whatever you do throughout the day for the brethren and for strangers. Now, a lot of times, brethren were the Jewish people and strangers were the Gentiles. And I guess that's why, you know, us Gentiles are kind of strange, aren't we? <laughs> but we were the outsiders who were brought in by the grace of the Lord. And so John was exhorting the believers, beloved, you know, you fellow believers out there, you continue to be faithful in whatever you do for the brethren and the strangers. Continue to show this love. See, love has to have action to it. And if, if there's no action, then it, there's no cost. And, and so John wanted the church to say, okay, I want you to continue to show this love. I want you to continue to walk in this truth, not only amongst the people who you normally have fellowship with, but also for the strangers. I remember back in the 60s when I became a Christian, <laughs> you could say I was a stranger. I was strange. <laughs> I had hair down to here, and I had a big goatee, and I was wearing hippie clothes, 
and I was one of those ones who moved from the hippie movement to a Jesus movement or to a Jesus freak. And, you know, I got saved and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, but the church kind of thought I was strange. And a lot of churches didn't want to have much to do with us hippies or us uh, Jesus people because we were just coming right out of the kind of the Gentile side of things. And now we were coming in. I remember sitting up in a church one morning in the balcony, looking down and was fascinated about all the kinds of different hats that women wore. Because see, when you went to church, you had to wear a certain kind of hat, I guess, and a certain kind of dress and a certain kind of this. And so it just preoccupied me. I don't think I ever heard what the sermon was, but I was just fascinated about what people would wear. And, and then people would come up to me and, you know, they would say, Jim, it's so good to have you here. And they would look at me and they would, they would see me with my long hair and my, my big goatee and my, by my kind of like a burlap type fuzzy coat. And then they would look down and, and see that I had safety boots all covered with paint, you know, cause I worked in a, in a, in a factory and that. <laughs> My only shoes I had was my steel-toed shoes and safety boots, and so that's what I wore to church. Well, I was one of those strangers, and, and not everybody accepted back then, and still probably didn't accept today, but there was one lady that accepted and started to invite her, invite me to her house and, and uh, introduce me to her family, and I began to, uh, Laura Burke, began to speak the love of God into my life and began to show me, you know, the love of God. And it was through her and several others that I became a believer in Christ. And so when he talks about this, beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and the strangers, both for those inside. Don't just do what you do for the ones that just in the church. Well, I'm going to do it for them. I'm going to help them out when they're sick. I'm going to help them out when they're struggling. I'm going to help, you know, all those people. But what about the ones that are on our street? What about the ones that are struggling, that are not part of our little group? Are we willing that we would call strangers? That we don't, do we don't know much about them, but John is trying to say, hey, you know, beloved, be faithful in whatever you do, both to the brothers or the brethren and the sisters and to strangers. Do it. Do it for them, you know, even though you may not know. Start a conversation. Start talking with them. Start to get to know them. Start to reach out to them. And that's what John was trying to, you know, not only remind um, Gaius, but also was going to remind the people that were reading this letter. He says in verse 6, You have borne witness of your love before the church. Who have these people, the brethren and the strangers, have borne witness of your love before the church. So here's our word love again. And John is saying, as you have been uh, uh, walking in this truth of love, in this commandment that John had talked about in earlier books, as you walked in this, you have borne a witness. That, I have born, that idea of born means to birth forth. You are birth forth a witness. A witness, you know, when you're born, that means if you're a mother and you have a child, you're born forth or you birth forth a child. And John wanted to birth forth out of the church uh, a witness of the love of God. Isn't that amazing? He wants to the church, the elect lady, and also the brethren to birth forth a witness of love to the strangers. And you know what? That's what Paul was doing. Paul went anywhere and everywhere that the Holy Spirit led. And he was birthing forth the gospel of love to strangers. And people would follow him around and, and try to ridicule him and try to say that he was a liar and only the good news should go to the Jews and not to the Gentiles and all these kinds of things. And Paul saw that the Lord had tore down the dividing wall between the two. That the love and the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ, his shed blood, had torn down the dividing wall. And so, brethren, he said, you know, we need to come to the place, as in the truth of love, that we encourage one another and that we bear witness of that love, you know, your love before the church. That people, both outwardly and inwardly, could see the love. 
If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. So this is what's beginning to happen now. Remember what it talked about walking in the truth of love? So the church got this idea that, okay, you know, we can't just keep this for ourselves, but we need to get out there and share it. So different teachers and pastors and leaders and individuals would go and share it. You can imagine if you were going on a business trip, you know, to another community, and while you're there, the church would say, hey, come on in and share with us what's going on in your church. Share with us what's going on in your community. Wouldn't that be an interesting thought that that would go on, you know? And I've experienced that around the world. I don't experience it a lot in Canada, but I experienced that, you know, when people found out, oh, you're a believer. I, I remember that day when I met a brother and his family in the mall. They had just come over from Ukraine, from war and everything else, and they could hardly speak English. And uh, they came up to our table and we talked to them. <laughs> And I told you this story before, but the thing is, you know, once he, uh, he found out I was a believer and I found out he was a believer, there was great rejoicing, a great witnessing of God's blessing that went on between us. And that, that whole idea is that even though we lived thousands of miles apart, we were now brothers and sisters in the Lord. His family was part of my family and I was part of him. And, and uh, there was a witness that came forth from the church. And so what they did was they would then, if you send them forward, if you send them out, you know, if the church says, okay, why don't we go and send some out people out to the neighboring community? Why don't we go out and send people out to that church and bring the gospel? See, people were expected back in these days, and it's sad that we have dropped that because it's not biblical, but we, we've dropped it, that all believers were expected to share their faith to share their love of Christ to others. It was expected. It wasn't just a chosen few, but it was everybody that who believed in Jesus Christ was expected to share their faith. And so here John was saying, hey, when we know that you're sending people in different places, you know, the church, that's what the church is all about. It's a sending body. Not just sending missionaries, sending everybody. Wherever you go today, Realize you're a representative of the church of Jesus Christ, of the love of God, of the truth of God. And so what happened, that if you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. So he's saying, you know, hey, in the manner of God, you know, that we need to be a testimony. And and so gather together as a house church or whatever and and take up a love offering or whatever you need to do. And send them forth so that they could be a witness of the truth of the love of God. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine if we could find all those little communities around Marchand or around La or around Steinbach and send people forth to go out, you know, go out to a hall, go out to the street, go out wherever and tell people about Jesus Christ. That was the idea that they would send them forth in a manner worthy of you know, of God, you will do well. When you do this, he's saying you will do well. He's saying God's going to bless you. God's going to go bless you. Go out and, you know, go out and, you know, take a plate of cookies and give them away, whatever it may be. Just be out in the highways and byways, compelling people to come to Christ. And so he's setting something up here because in tomorrow, Lord willing, when we get over to this, the third person that or the second person that John's going to talk about he's going to say that this guy here is is refusing to accept the people that are being sent out this is what becomes the issue and this is what John wants to talk about they said so he wanted the church to know that they should be sending out but he wanted the other local churches to know that they should be receiving them you know so the local churches maybe back in the 60s should be receiving us you know Jesus freaks and people that, you know, didn't know much about the Lord. Receive them and love them and encourage them and help them in their journey. You say, well, that's a lot of work. No, but that's the gospel. <laughs> you know what I mean? To go out and to receive them. So we need to be sending out as local body of believers according to the will of God. This is the path, the way of God. Jesus said, as you follow me, you know, go out. Do add unto others as they have done, you know, all that kind of stuff. And he goes on. 
because in verse 7 he says because they went forth for his name's sake taking nothing from the gentile so then he clarifies what is this going forth all about he says well okay they're going forth not on behalf of themselves they're going forth on behalf of the name of jesus they went forth for his name's sake you know they're doing this we're doing what we're doing not for the local church we're doing what we're doing for the body of christ we're doing what we're doing for the kingdom of heaven you know it's sad that we have to sometimes have all these little local individual type places and we'll do what we're doing and you do what we're you're doing but the two can't touch i saw that in discipleship training over and over again we have a discipleship school in this church but because it was being held in that church that church wouldn't come to this church you know because well that's that church and then so we would disciple those people then we would have to go uh, pull up and go next door to the other church and then have a different week and disciple them because you know they wanted to keep it separate and keeps in case they somehow got each other contaminated or dirty or something i don't know what it was but it always blew me away that i had to have to have you know 10 different discipleship schools in in one local area and i'm thinking hey you know what's this all about we're trying to get discipled in jesus christ but people were afraid to go from one to another so paul says first of all be willing to go Help your brothers and sisters. Take the giftings that you got and help them. But those of you who are over there, also be willing to receive and help them as, as you receive them. Now, that's going to be really going to stir up a bunch of us today, isn't it? But that's the reality. I'm, I'm trying to give you the historical background of what John is talking about. That John was upset that now churches that were being established were choosing you know who could come and have fellowship with them and who could and john is going to talk about that and that will be the rest of the story tomorrow but he goes on because they went forth for his name's sake they went forth under the power of jesus christ they went forth under the blessing of god and he said taking nothing from the gentiles so they these people who were of the the strangers who were believers who were gentiles who became believers they were beginning to go forth and they weren't taking you know things from the gentiles but they were going in faith in the name of our lord jesus christ to share the good news wherever they went and i think this is this is just a tremendous section here you know they born witness so he said whatever you do however you bear witness then remember that you were sent forth in the name of jesus christ and that God would provide for you, that God would look after you. Then he goes on in our last verse for today. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. So that's why I said this issue, you know, that was, there was a division that was beginning to happen. And of course, back then there was only, you know, there was all these other false religions and all these other types of temples and everything else. But John was saying, you know, we're all believers in Jesus Christ. What's going on here? Do you believe Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you believe that, you know, he came and died on the cross for you? Yes. Do you believe that he was born of a virgin? Yes. Do you believe that he walked here on earth as a son of man? Yes. Do you believe that he died on the cross for you and shed his blood? Yes. Do you believe that he was resurrected from the dead? Yes. Do you believe that he has ascended into heaven and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Yes. You know, do you believe that he has sent forth his spirit upon the church yes and birth forth the church do you believe he's going to come back again yes do you believe that there is a kingdom of heaven yes and that's the basis for all fellowship that's what we believe in that's what that's why you had these these um things that that were taught to different churches and and teaching so that they could understand what they believed in and on the basis of those simple beliefs, they could, they, you know, like the Apostle Creed and some of those other, the other creeds that were given in the early church, they could have fellowship around that. And so John was saying, hey, this is the reason that you go out, but this is also the reason why you receive. And I know it's scary nowadays to receive people. You don't know much about them or anything. And, 
And on, I've had to be careful as an elder in a church who we receive. I get that. But that doesn't mean we stop it, but that means we just check it out. Find out their credentials. Find out who they really are in the Lord. Hear about their t testimony. Feel, hear about their love for Jesus Christ. And on the basis of that, we can have fellowship one with another. Amen. And so we therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers. What they're doing is the same thing what we're doing. And if it's the same thing, let's do it together. Oh, you wouldn't believe how often I face churches after churches that don't want to do anything together. I'm amazed that Billy Graham was able to do what he was doing. They're able to get churches to come together. And he wouldn't go to a community unless the churches would come together. That they would start meeting together, praying together, working together to put on a crusade. He wouldn't come. And I'm thinking, you know, how, how often things don't happen in communities because we refuse to have fellowship together. We refuse to work together. We refuse to, to receive those who have been sent out, and we refuse to send those out who need to be received. You're saying, well, you know, Pastor Jim, you're really kind of coming at us between the eyes today. But I, I'm just trying to tell you what John is saying, what he's trying to say. That we become fellow workers, and I love it. We're fellow workers in what area? We're fellow workers in the truth. And that's the key right there. Is the truth that you believe and the truth that I believe, is there a fellowship ground in between? If the answer is yes, we're fellow workers. I'm fellow workers with people all over the world. We can't do it all by ourselves. We have to work with one another. We have, you know, I always sometimes tease people. You know, if you can't get along with each other here on earth, how in the world are you going to get along with each other in heaven? You know, that's something that we're going to, I think we're going to have to deal with. But you know, that doesn't mean we agree 100%, but on the basic fundamentals of the word of truth, we can have fellowship. The basic fundamentals of the word of truth, we can send people forth. On the basic fundamentals of the word of truth, we can receive other brothers and sisters. And that's why John says, I can bear witness that who have borne witness of the love before the church, that as you sent them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. And that they have been faithful in all that they have done. This is an amazing little scripture and a lot of you know, it would be an amazing thing to stand up in church after church after church and be able to preach this and say, hey, come on now. What are we going to do to send forth people? What are we going to do? Send forth, send forth. You know, I just I, I, I just loved it when, when I think of the church of Antioch and I think of of how they sent people out. And sometimes we send people out, you know, well, they're, you know, they're not really the best and we really don't get them to fit in, so we send them out. The thing I loved about Antioch is they sent out their top guns. You know what I'm saying? They didn't, you know, I mean, when you think about it, Antioch, a young church, and they gather together as a body of believers, they love Paul and they love Barnabas. And they gathered together and they said amongst them, we'll send them. I sometimes teasingly say, and I get into trouble for this, but sometimes I think the church needs to send their pastors. <laughs> if they're such great pastors, send them. <laughs> send the top guns out there to be able to bring the good news of Jesus Christ. Now I'm really going to stir up trouble this morning. You know what I'm saying? But in reality... You know, we're, we're in fellowship one with another through the gospel of Jesus Christ. As when we break that gospel code, when we break the rules of the gospel, that's when we go out of fellowship. But if we, have, if we are living on the basis of the gospel, the love of God, that's where we have fellowship. That's why we send people out, and that's why we as fellow believers send receive people. You know, and I think that's a unique, that, that's what God is all about. And, you know, we're going to have an opportunity, I think, this summer to receive some people that are not part of our fellowship, not part of our church, 
but they're part of the kingdom of God. Amen? And I think that's what it's all about. And so when John, as we conclude today, that John is going to talk about the fellowship of believers and the fellowship that we need to have between churches. We need to go back and refocus on that. Rethink about that. Pray about that. And that ask that the Lord would use us to not only to be sent, but also to be people who will receive. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for what John is trying to teach the elect lady of the church, Lord. Oh, he's trying to teach the children of the church the truth of fellowship, Lord, the truth of love, and Lord, the truth of being able to be senders, but not only senders, but receivers. And Father, we can see that even in the times of Paul, that he would be sent out, Barnabas would be sent out, John, Mark, T Timothy, Titus, sent ones who would be sent out and they would be received. And the interesting thing, Lord, that they were received in the synagogues. They were received in the communities and they proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, they also received affliction and trials and troubles, but oh God, they also re received fellowship from their fellow brothers and sisters in those areas. And so, Lord, I pray that we would be a sending church and a receiving church. And we just give you thanks for what you're going to do with this message this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us again today. Thank you for your comments. We love you. Keep on keeping on in Jesus and ask the Lord to maybe speak to you where you can be sent and maybe the Lord would show you where you will be received. Amen. We love you and look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Amen. Bye-bye for now.